my name is Wimar. Uh, I will do a first brief introduction of what it is that you're gonna witness in this webinar. Uh, but the more important people are Ewan and Sophia, who are briefly gonna introduce themselves right now. Hey, yeah. So I'm I'm Ewan. I'm a software developer and yeah, involved in the machine learning department as well at Trifork. And I'm also with uh... yeah, Sophia. I'm a machine learning engineer here at Trifork. Um, we'll be here delivering the demo. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. So uh, if you guys can move to the first slide. Yeah, perfect. So any webinar needs to have slides, but we try to limit it to the absolute minimum. So uh, bear with me and uh, the demo of artificial intelligence uh, is going to be the more important part. Um, AI and context centers uh, for us starts with customers. What this means is we start with what does the customer expect? What does the customer of a context center actually expect? Um, and whoever we talk to, uh, whoever of our customers we talk to, it always drills down to net promoter score, excellent service, uh, the expert should understand my situation, uh, please give me a solution that works and come up with that solution quickly. So from a customer perspective, it's fairly clear what is expected from a contact center, whatever that contact center actually does. Next slide, please. So if you look at it from the other end, from the contact centers, and actually uh, it's much more mixed. Um, in general, the number one thing that we get is, uh, could you please help our uh, agents to reduce the call duration? Uh, other items that they bring forward is, well, we have a high turnover in agents in our call centers anyway. Uh, so the onboarding is rather essential as well. Could you streamline the onboarding of our new agents? Uh, and in essence, it all drinks, uh, drills down to uh, if we start applying artificial intelligence, uh, could you come up with a solution that actually is cost effective and helps us to do our job better? Next slide, please. For us, AI, machine learning, working with data uh, actually start always with the business. That means that unless there is a metric uh, that we know of and that we can improve, it's fairly hard, hard to, uh, to be successful. So typically what we have get from our customers is traditional KPIs or more traditional KPIs like call duration, waiting time, how much does it take to take notes after the call, uh, does this influence the pre-dialer time, etc. cetera. Uh, and somewhere in that list, there is customer satisfaction. But the interesting thing is now it starts with the first set of KPIs and customer satisfaction apparently always come seconds. Whatever KPI you have in mind, uh, it starts here. We only do our projects if we know what success is actually going to look like. Next slide, please. So if you look at the average call duration, uh, and, and when we started to, to influence that, that call duration, pretty soon you figure out that uh, if there's no first time right, and a customer actually has to call five times, uh, yes, there's a shorter call duration, uh, that he's still not going to be happy and it's going to be uh, actually not cost effective. So first time right answers are important as well. Um, as I said, the employee onboarding, uh, while not directly uh, in there, is crucially as well. Most of the call centers that we work with have a high turnover of employees in that particular call center. So the sooner we get a new employee uh, ready to rock and roll in the call center, the better it is. And what we always have is uh, customers telling us, well, there's a huge amount of data in here. Uh, we have all these silos. So uh, uh, applying artificial intelligence in the call center setting in a contact center also means doing something useful with data, uh, be able to cross the boundaries of those data silos. But there is more business challenges than average call duration, and it's crucial to get them right. If you don't get them right, uh, it's hard to be successful. So these are the typical ones that we try to influence with our uh, current customer set. Next slide, please. So all the customers that we have met over, let's say the last six months, essentially tell us the same thing. We are done optimizing the process. We have call center software. We have analyzed the hell out of it. We, do, we have done our business process modeling. We have done our Six Sigma. We have done our value stream mapping but we're simply at the end of what we think is possible with the current setup to optimize what we're doing. So it always starts 
we have done optimizing, what else can we do to optimize better? What else can we do to increase the customer satisfaction? And that's actually where this all starts. Next slide, please. So typically the trigger questions that we see with our customers is something that says, well, we have all this data uh, and in email and in voice recordings and in WhatsApp recordings and in Messenger, we have all this data, surely there must be something we can do with it. Uh, or we're in a, in a meeting where somebody would start sentences like, imagine we could, or surely we can, or if, if only we could. These are typically questions where you would start. If that is the start uh, and AI uh, is real, this, this webinar is about uh, applying artificial intelligence today. It is not what you can do next year or the year after. This is what you can do today. And rather than to continue with just slides with it, might be possible, we thought it would be much better to just demo you live what we have done and how it works. And with that, I hand it over to the demo team. Uh, guys, please start the next slide. This is what you're going to see. This is a traditionally uh, what happens in the call center. There's a question. We need to identify what happens. Then I put you on hold to figure out what it is that you want. I need to figure out the context. Then I will do some searching. I put you off hold. I get back in the question. I try to answer and then I register my call. It might be slightly different in your call center, but this is typically what happens. If you move on to the next slide. Then all the pain points are clear as well. Steep learning curve, uh, we're not able to respect the customer context. Uh, the answers might not be accurate, uh, accurate at all. So there's a long pain point list of pain points that we can have. So what we thought would be best to demo what can be done today is if we can skip a lot of these steps directly. It means that rather than uh, type in, uh, just transcribe what has been said, speech to text. Uh, figure out what are the keywords that are relevant to shortcut from the decision tree, from the, uh, the decision tree that you have to get from step one to 13 directly by just uh, having the speech transcribed to text. And then we'll uh, find out all the relevant documents and all the other solutions that we have done. So take the pain points, take the current process, apply AI, and then see, can we shortcut this process and do it much, much faster and much better. Next slide, please. And you got to respect the customer contact. So most of our customer contact centers have very complicated setup. It's regional and then it's a product. Uh, and then it's uh, the next step is a contract. And then it's uh, yet another level of detail. And then it's yet another level of detail. All these, com these, these customer uh, complex customer contacts you need to be able uh, to get from step one to level five, basically just by listening to what has been said rather than asking recurrent set of questions. And if you then move to the next slide, we need to be able to validate if the answer that we give is correct. Uh, this is what you're going to see in, in the demo in a couple of seconds where actually uh, validate the answer accuracy is going to be crucial. All the clustering that you can do from a technology point of view needs to be put in good use from a contact center uh, point of view. Next slide, please. The impact, this is just a slide that I use from one of our customers. Uh, there are many, many others, but in the end, as I said in the beginning, you, you start with a metric, you, you start with what success looks like. Uh, you implement uh, as fast as, as you can uh, a AI project in a contact center, and then you just measure does it actually help? Does it help to reduce the call duration? Does it help to do the onboarding? Uh, does it help to reduce the back office support level two and three support in there? This was just about, uh, after a couple of sprints, uh, the whole continuous improvement mindset of the, all of this AI stuff means you start here, it already works and then you make it better. But you gotta measure if there is an impact. The measuring is a crucial part of the whole project. Next slide, please. Okay, so, so. sorry, sorry that, that that's my fault. So with that, uh, as I said, the brief amounts, uh, number of slides possible. And uh, Sophia, Ewan, please do the demo and show that this actually is be is possible today. It's up to you. Eric. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Fima. Um, yeah, so now we're gonna do a short demonstration of what we've got working here at Trifork. 
in in the demo, you'll see a demonstration of doing live speech to text transcriptions. We'll also be doing recognition of keywords that we find in that in those transcriptions. We'll also be able to uh, use the uh, the keywords to selectively route uh, the customer to the correct department. Um, we'll also be able to access external data sources and draw them into the agent screen so they can use that information. And we'll be able to monitor the sentiment of the, the discussion between the agent and the client throughout the, the course of the call. So we're going to change screens now from the, the slides to the, the application itself. And while we're doing that, I'll just uh, yeah, describe the, the demo itself will be composed of two, two separate parts. The first will be a demonstration of an intake process. Um, and the second will be a call between an agent and the uh, an agent and the customer itself. So I think we're just going to put on the, the camera now as well. There we go. Cool. Um, so during this intake, there's as you can see, there's no visual interface. But that's because it's just a demonstration of a, a call between a customer on the phone and a voice bot. Um, so there's no involvement from the agent at this point. And during this process, we try to ascertain what the actual problem is that the, experience, the customer is experiencing. Um, and this serves to give the agent useful information before the call actually starts. Um, it means that we're actually making valuable use of time when the customer would otherwise be on hold. We're already getting information from them, and they feel like, you know, their case is being attended to. Um, and we're also able to route the call to an agent who's best able to help them based on the problem that we identify. Um, and after this, we'll be redirected to the agent screen, which I will yeah, describe when we get there. Um, just to set the scene, the scenario which we're going to play out is for a breakdown assistance service, where the customer, in this case, Sophia, is calling in with a problem about her car. Um, and I will play the part of the agent when we get to that part of the demo. Yeah, so let's start the demo. Thank you for calling roadside assistance. Please describe in a few words, what can we help you with? Hi, we were driving through Germany and we have a flat tire. Are you currently in Germany? Yes. We will now transfer your call to an agent in Germany. Okay, so now, as I said, we are redirected to a screen that the agent would see. Uh, obviously, normally the agent will pick up the call straight away, but for the sake of the demo, I'll quickly explain the kind of things that we are seeing on this screen. So in the top right, we have a panel that's showing uh, a transcription of the call. So as you can see, we already have a transcription of the discussion that just happened between the customer and the voice bot in the intake. And from this, we extracted domain relevant keywords, such as the location that the customer is in, i.e. Germany and the problem they're experiencing, which is that they have a flat tire. So those keywords are then shown in the keyword panel. Now, based on these keywords that we've extracted, we're able to filter the handbook that the, the uh, agents have available to them. And then they can uh, look at these cards and use them as prompts for possible follow-up questions and possible solutions. So in this case, we see that it's prompting us to ask whether there is a spare tire. So that's something that the agent will consider. Uh, in the call itself. Also, we can see in the bottom right, sorry, that we are also bringing up uh, similar call histories based on the keywords we've extracted. We can find previous cases and uh, perhaps inexperienced uh, agents can look at these for ideas as to how they can solve the problems at hand. Additionally, we're, as I mentioned, we're tracking sentiment. So you can see in the top right, current sentiment is, is good, so green, uh, but that will change between uh, yellow for neutral and red if it's bad. You'll notice when we start the agent call, that will change throughout. And we also make available yeah, external sources of data. So if we want to get, for instance, more information about the customer's vehicle, we can use their number plate and access uh, external API to pull that data into the, the keywords. Um, and then that could be used to filter upon the handbook and other relevant calls. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I think we'll start the uh, the call between the agent um, and I'll pick up the call and continue speaking with the customer. Good morning, this is uh, the help desk. It's you and speaking. Uh, I see this phone number is registered under the name Jane Milton. Is that correct? Yeah, that's me. 
Okay. Uh, I see you're stuck with a flat tire. Is that also the case? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you have a spare with you? No, that's a problem. We don't have a spare tire. Okay. And uh, are you nearby your car at the moment? Your car, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We're next to our car. Okay. I'm going to organize a mechanic uh, to come to you. Uh, could you describe your location in slightly more detail, please? Yeah, we're right after the first exit to Berlin in Germany. Okay, uh, I see that we can have a mechanic with you within 30 minutes and they should be able to bring a spare tire with them. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. Okay, thanks, Ms. Milton. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so yeah, that kind of concludes the uh, the demo scenario. As you, I'm sure you noticed throughout the call, we can continue to transcribe the discussion and we extracted more relevant keywords throughout. Um, in this case, the, the fact that it was a flat tire and the suggestion to prompt as to whether they had a spare or not was enough to work out whether we needed to send a mechanic or not. But we could have, if, if supposing uh, Sophia had also lost her keys per se, um, that would have come up in the transcription uh, and they would have been in the keywords as well. So then we see that those are also being pulled up from the handbook. So there are more suggestions available to the, uh, the agent. Um, I think with that, um, unless Vima has anything to add, we uh, will return to the slides. I'll switch back on my microphone. Can you hear me again? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you fine. Perfect. Maybe it's good to uh, um, zoom in a little bit on the external data. Uh, so this is this is real life data. Uh, how does it work? Uh, and what are potentially other uses that we can have from this? Uh, maybe that could be good to add to what you just demoed. Thanks for the demo, by the way. Great work. Oh yeah, thank you very much. So you mean, uh, yeah, we could also, for instance, we're not showing it here in the demo, but we could also include things like the weather. Right? This is obviously relevant, uh, especially in a roadside assistance service, uh, whether it's icy and things like this. So that, 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 that is great. So, so it is it is an API. We're using external data, and it could be anything that you want. Whatever external data is available to uh, make the decision process better, uh, something that we add. So it's not just internal data; it's also external data. That's a short mm -hmm. version of it, right? Yes, that's correct. So the, the other the other question that most likely is going to come up, so let's answer it ourselves, uh, would be uh, the keywords. Uh, you. You, you obviously have a list of keywords. Uh, how could machine learning uh, help us to uh, create that keyword list? What would be the process that we could have in place to get to that keyword list? And more important, keep it up to date. It will change. How, so how do I keep my keyword list up to date as well? Any so thoughts if, there that you want to share with the audience, please? So for instance, you already mentioned the uh, this idea of um, a data silo. Right. So especially in the case of call centers, if they have all these recorded calls, we can equally go through those uh, those recordings and do speech to text transcriptions and and basically ascertain what are the kind of uh, domain specific words that come up regularly and what kind of problems are they associated with. So certainly if there's a big backlog of data, that's a good starting point. Um, and then we can continue feeding the transcripts that we get back into this. Uh, yeah, kind of pool of data and continue to, to extract keywords and link them to various problems and solutions in an ongoing process. Okay. Uh, and another question that typically comes up when we do the demo for customers is this. Um, you essentially have an inexperienced person on the call, uh, the customer with an inexperienced uh, person on the contact center that's trying to solve a visual problem verbally. What could we use, uh, for example, by taking pictures of a problem? How would that help us uh, to even do better? Uh, first of all, can we can we integrate uh, taking pictures with an iPhone, for example, in this process? And what could we do from a machine learning point of view uh, to actually uh, use that uh, to, again, uh, uh, shorten the call duration? Any, any thoughts you want to share there? Uh, you know? Um, if I think specifically in the case of this breakdown service, 
Um, obviously, it would wouldn't work directly in terms of them calling up. But if they sent a picture in and then they were prompted to pick up a call based on the picture that they sent in, certainly if they took took a picture, you know, for instance, of underneath the bonnet bonnet in the car of the engine, uh, they might not have the, the kind of technical vocabulary to describe exactly what the problem is, but it might be, you know, they might be able to point at the thing which the problem is, uh, where the problem appears to be, but they can't describe it properly. So certainly, yeah, you can use image recognition to to work out what parts of, you know, which uh, bits of the vehicle are what and whether they look like they've malfunctioned. Um, yeah, I don't see why we couldn't do that. Okay, cool. Well, then we, we have uh, some request where it says, well, uh, can we can we switch to visual rather than verbally, right? And for those of you on a call, a bonnet is actually a hood. So just that you know what part of a car that is. Right. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that. Hey, let's move on to the next couple of slides and then start answering questions. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few. Um, what we have learned is that um, there's a lot of data, uh, and rather than having people in interpret the data, uh, it's much better to have the machine uh, do that. Uh, that's done in two ways. Uh, as you can see, it's done live during the interaction. Uh, we thought that actually just showing uh, uh, that speech to text works and text to keyboards work and keyboards to uh, a, a, a cue card works uh, is the better way than just showing slides. Uh, that is the live part, but there also is another part, uh, what we call the domain harvesting part, where we just take all the information that a particular customer in a call center has collected and it could be that could be call recordings, it could be email, uh, it could be WhatsApp messages, could be messenger, and then again have a machine interpreted uh, their data set. That will lead to a set of keywords, keywords just uh, uh, by itself, keywords in proximity, uh, and having that process in place uh, also means that going forward we can keep that keyword list uh, up to date by just rerun the same thing. The more data you, re, uh, you acquire, uh, the better it's going to be. And this is really uh, one of the continuous improvement uh, assets uh, or way of thinking that we have. And the second one uh, is what we call the virtual expert. Uh, a lot of our customers said, well, we do have experts, but not enough. Or we do have experts um, uh, and, and they're about uh, your age, that would be me, and they're about to retire. Uh, you can overcome these years of experience gap. And uh, what we have seen in this particular example with roadside assistance uh, is that where, where typically new employees would be online and use and, 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 and contributing in three months, you can already have them start contributing in a week. It's, it's a huge advantage. A virtual expert on your site actually overcomes the years of experience gap. The third one uh, is a crucial, I mentioned before, but just keep mentioning it. Unless you have a key business driver, uh, the fact that it can be done by AI doesn't mean you have to do it. We got to find a metric that tells us, was this actually useful? Did it contribute? Uh, what does success look like? And in the end, uh, and hopefully the demo uh, gave you this idea, all this AI is really sort of like a black box. It's abstract. Uh, it's very hard to get an idea what it, what it does. But just look at it as a toolbox that allows to do something useful with your data. And then if you would use the demo that you have just seen and would apply it to your own situation, what would potentially be applications that come to mind? There's a whole world out there where AI is live. There's a whole world of contact centers with years of experience. There's a lot of data. Uh, there are things we can do different and things we can do better. And that moves us to the next slide even. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I thought it was, uh, that's, that's my fault. Hey, being in a car and doing a webinar <laughs> certainly is not optimal, but uh, hey, this is what it is. Um, everybody on the call, uh, I hope this gave you an idea what can be done. And uh, all these demos are online. You can you can just watch the videos. You can apply it to your own situation as well. On Somewhere on the right side of your screen is a question box. If you have any questions that you want to have us answer right now, please answer the, uh, or enter the question in the question box. Uh, and one of us, uh, either from a business or technology point of view, uh, can pick up that question. Oh, we have 
one question from, yeah, apologies if I mispronounce your name. One from uh, Jeppe, Jeppe. How do you solve speech to text in other languages than English? So that's a good ah, question. Cool, yeah, it's um, up to you, man. Answer that one. And it's a very relevant, obviously, for us, uh, given that we're a Dutch-based company. Um, yeah, a lot of the oh, clients sure. are very interested in that. Maybe we can even go back to the, the demo screen. Um, so you can see yeah, in the top right here, we so far we've kind of uh, got this demo working in, in four different languages, English obviously being the one that we demonstrated, but we have Danish, Dutch, and German as well. Um, and basically the, the limitation is, is kind of put on how good the speech to text is in that language. So English is uh, unsurprisingly the best, but we find that the German, Dutch, and Danish models are perfectly good enough to get uh, the keywords that we need to do uh, to kind of filter through the employee handbook and things like that. So it's not a hugely uh, limiting factor, actually, to be honest, so far, at least in the languages that we've been working in. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. And it's good to add that, you know, the language transcription does not need to be perfect. It needs to be good enough uh, to get to the keywords. That's one. Uh, but the other side effect of all of this is that at the end of the call, uh, they don't have to write a summary of that call. That summary is created automatically. Um, the, the Dutch one is uh, extremely good. So this is directly applicable in, in, a, in, a, in a Dutch uh, contact center setting. Uh, the German one is, is good, the Danish one, but I can list a whole bunch of other languages. Sophia tested the Spanish one as well. Yeah. Um, so far, I've only encountered one problem where the customer uh, specifically wanted us to have this done in Schweizer Deutsch, if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, that's a sort of a twist of the German. Uh, uh, it works, but it's not good enough yet. Uh, so that's the only one where I'm aware of that it doesn't work. All the other languages uh, are perfectly good enough. Uh, and we actually online have demos where we do exactly the same script, but then in Dutch, and you will see the accuracy of the, of the transcript is, uh, is almost 100%. This actually exists, and you can use, start using it today. This is not some, something from a far away future. Any other questions in there? Because I can't see the questions you want. Uh, we also have a question about how much data do we need to start with this? Um, so, in terms of doing the speech to text, you don't need any data. Um, obviously, in terms of being able to call up, uh, bring up relevant past cases, you need to have records of those. But yeah, assuming that you had, uh, yeah, some kind of uh, set of, I, I think most call centers have some kind of a script and uh, like a knowledge, uh, kind of a handbook, you can work from that and link it to the keywords which are extracted from the. Uh, the transcriptions itself and obviously as, as you start recording those transcriptions the process will iteratively get better but you can you can do a cold start for sure with this yeah. and maybe you know, to add to that um some one of our customers where we have done this for uh, they had uh, six years of live data that we could uh, access directly from a bi system and uh, there was 17 years of data somewhere in a obscure uh, database uh, what we do is all uh, uh, move that to a uh, situation where we can either uh, use it in Amazon or, or, or Azure or, uh, or Google. Um, of course, we do that in a GDPR compliant way, uh, but, but most of our customers so far, uh, the data has not to be the limitation. Um, what was slightly a problem was data having a separate silo, so that's something that, of course, we need to solve, uh, but once we have the data, um, the data amount to get this to work uh, has not been the limitation. Uh, once you once you make once you put this live, uh, what is surprising is the amount of extra data that you're going to generate. Uh, so it's more we're going to generate a whole bunch of extra data, which means we can do all sort of new things go, going forward. Um, but the data uh, it's important, but has not been the limitation yet. Uh, either email or WhatsApp or Messenger or uh, live recorded uh, uh, calls. Any other questions in there, uh, Ewan? Yeah, we just uh, we have a follow-up question related to the speech-to-text in other languages, and it's asking whether this, the uh, smart contact center can detect the spoken language of the caller, or whether we just uh, select the language uh, 
beforehand. So in the case of the demo you saw, we would select the language beforehand. Um, if we wanted to have it working in such a way that it would kind of dynam dynamically respond to the language, that would be a little bit more complicated. Um, I think the simplest solution would be as part of the intake, intake if you were expecting people to call uh, with different languages, you would you would simply have to ask them which which language they speak in, and then they would respond, and we would have to transcribe that to a, a keyword, and from there we would kind of adjust the speech to text recognition. Uh, I think you are in potentially in dangerous territory trying to do it live in case yeah, if you if you get it incorrect, then you are trying to transcript the wrong language, um, and some languages sound very similar. In, you know, for certain words. So I think you would really need a definitive uh, statement that I'm going to be speaking this language. Uh, yeah. At least that would be where I would start. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. And, uh, um, w whenever there's a risk that something goes wrong, uh, we still do it uh, in a manual way. But that, that really means then rather than having customers listen to all from music as you typically have in a contact center, no offense, man, uh, but, but it is awful. Uh, we can also ask relevant questions and those relevant questions are all questions that really help us to once you get uh, with a uh, with a live agent uh, all, all, all the questions are already have been answered uh, what is your preferred language so most of our customers are in the Netherlands uh, somewhere in Switzerland uh, the default language here is going to be Dutch uh, but we have a lot of expats in Amsterdam that prefer English that would typically be a, a, a question that we would a ask before the live call actually starts. Any other questions that we can answer right now, Ian? Um, yeah, we have one more. Can we make analysis based on the calls and keywords if we um, implement this? Um, so it's quite a, a broad question if I understand it correctly, but I think we could certainly do more kind of high level analysis on what is happening with the calls. So perhaps I can tie in this, uh, we haven't spoken much about the sentiment analysis. So it's perhaps not obvious just in, you know, for the agent why the, the sentiment analysis is useful because they, they should be able to work out whether the, uh, the customer's uh, in a good mood or not. But if we can, uh, after the fact, link whether certain questions and certain topics are typically come with a disgruntled customer or that certain things make the customer happy, you can start to identify uh, problem areas and perhaps the caller scripts aren't working well for these problems because it's always associated with uh, yeah, a customer is in a bad mood. Uh, so I, I don't know if that necessarily answers your question, but this is some kind of yeah, higher, ne higher level analysis that you could do based on the data that you would be able to collect with the keywords and the transcriptions. And, and, and since we're going to generate a whole bunch of more data, you will have almost like a perfect transcription of every call that ha has happened once you start implementing this. And there's much more analysis that can be done. So the sentiment analysis, while maybe not so useful during the call, certainly allows us, as even said, to well says, if we change the way um, we do the script and the, 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 the order in which we do the questions, if we change that and we do a little of A-B testing, uh, uh, does it have an effect on the sentiment? That's certainly something uh, that, that we can do. Uh, in general, uh, all the data in there, including uh, what you're going to generate, allows you to do a whole bunch of extra stuff. And it might well be that you come to the conclusion, um, we need an external do data source uh, in order to do this better. Then let's figure out what that external data source is going to be. And I think all in all, the best way to to to, to explain the way we implement it, because uh, we, we typically say we do agile machine learning or agile AI, we try to get to an implication uh, to an implementation as you have just seen in this little demo as fast as possible. Because once you are alive, you start generating data, and then we can figure out how we can do it better. So the continuous improvement is is a crucial element of the way we actually do this uh, with our uh, with our customers. Any other questions, Ewan, that you see in front of you? Um, so far, there since that one, there haven't been any more questions. Um, yeah, that's that, that's everything that, at the moment. Let's, let's wrap up. Hey, we're going to actually going to give people ten minutes.
in the day. That's going to be wonderful. <laughs> if you think this is interesting, and if you want to see it, and if you want to see it with your own call center, if you want to see it with your own language, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us. I'm uh, more than happy to just demo it live with your language. And uh, since we have an international team, we uh, actually cover a whole bunch of languages from Spanish to uh, German to English to Dutch to Danny, all sort of other languages. We can just demo it live. The purpose of this webinar was to show you AI exists today and you can use it today and it allows you to do stuff very, very different uh, than you have been trying uh, to do uh, up till uh, today. AI is not something far away, but it's here today. And I hope our little uh, webinar and our demo that we have shown you uh, gave you some hope. Ideas. If you want to talk about it, give me a call. Um, if you want to see the video online, we send out the link right after the webinar. Uh, and for now, we really want to thank you for your attention. Uh, we wish you a wonderful day. Yeah, uh, yeah. thanks a lot thank for, for joining us, guys. Bye.